Good morning, and how are you today? I'm fabulous. I'm ready for a cup of joe. Who's ready for a cup of joe? <laughs> All right, man. I hope you had a wonderful Labor Day weekend, and you did fun stuff with people. Uh, mine was okay. Just watch sports. <laughs> That's all I did was watch sports. Um, but hey, it's better than doing nothing, I guess. Man, I hope you have a great day today, and I hope you're getting ready to have a great week. Um, it is now fully September, and pretty soon it will really feel like fall, autumn, and I'm looking forward to that. All right, so there were a couple of things that I really want to get into this week, but I'm going to do this one first because it's interesting. I find it interesting. I don't know if you all have been keeping up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there's been a couple of political developments in California and Georgia, which I find kind of interesting. I don't know if you all have been keeping up with it. Uh, let's start in California first. Um, there is an attempt to have a recall election, to recall the governor, Gavin Newsom, um, and uh, to force him to have an, uh, an election. It's really weird. It's almost parliamentary, man. It's like they do in, uh, say, like England, where... They just sort of get together and say, hey, we're having an election. I think it's in England. A couple other countries that are like that that have these parliaments. And it's really weird because of the type of government that they have. You have to form some crazy coalitions between groups that we would never have in the United States. <laughs> it just wouldn't. Uh, it's so different. Anyway, <clears throat> um, the person that if this happens, um, and to go back a little bit, they had to sign petitions. You had to physically sign a petition. When you get close to 2 million people signing a petition to get a government out of, governor out of office, it's got to have some legs. I mean, it's the, there's no, there was no uh, mail-in uh, petition signing, <laughs> which is, we'll get into that in a second. Um, but uh, it, it looks like if this happens, which it looks like it might, um, the guy that's in, in, in the lead now to represent the Republicans, this is a guy by the name of Larry Elder. Larry Elder is a radio personality has a, a radio show out of Los Angeles, huge following, I mean, millions of listeners. And uh, <clears throat> he is a self-described libertarian, not really a Republican, um, but he is a small government guy and um, has he's very, very good with statistics and making an argument. He argues his positions really well, um, but he's also black. So it is quite the quandary for, for the Democrats in, de in California to have to deal with this because, as we all know, over the last 60 years, the Democrats are supposed to be the party that are for minorities. And they slowly but surely have, have sort of migrated away from the Labor Party, the Workers' Party, to now the party that is identified by social issues. This is, this is their big thing. It's not labor anymore. Um, it really comes down to race issues, but also you're starting to see a very slow, but it's not, it's a trickle now, but I don't think it's going to stay a trickle and it's got to be terrifying. The people that run this party of people of race of different races starting to say, yeah, we've had enough of the Democrats and, and I'm not, I'm not saying it because I think it's good or bad. I'm saying it because it's true. The big problem Newsom is running into in California is that Latinos are like, yeah, um, we don't want to vote for you. He's underwater polling with with Latinos in California, which is the, the, a large, massive, could be the largest voting block. If he's under 50% there, he, he's in a lot of trouble. Now, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't think he's going to lose. I don't think he's going to lose if, if it does go to a recall. The, there's just too much power. The Democrats are a one-party state. Um <clears throat> Completely, but they've been run by Democrats for decades. I know they've had a Republican governor fairly recent or in Schwarzenegger, but he, you know, how Republican was he? Um, and it was really, uh, or it really is interesting to watch this because the dynamic has always been the Republicans are the racists and they're the people that hate black people and hate Latinos and we're the people that love you. Well, California is not doing all that well. <laughs> Whether you love this state or hate it, you can't say it's doing well because there are too many numbers that say that it's struggling. Okay? First time ever, ever, literally ever, more people migrated out of California than stayed. 
Okay, more people migrated out of California in 2021 or 2020, excuse me. This is California we're talking about. It's the most beautiful state in the union. Um, and, and more people leave than, than come. Why? Why is that? Because things are going swimmingly? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, they are now ranked, and I just checked this double, in education, California, of all the states, in the, you could possibly be like, what? In education, they now rank 41st. If you're 41st out of 50, how good can it be going? Taxes. We don't even have to get into the tax rates there. It's just an insane amount. It's an insane amount of bureaucracy, insane amount of tax uh, 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 burden. And also, median house is almost eight hundred thousand dollars to buy a house in California now. Eight hundred thousand. What? <laughs> Not every place in California is Malibu. Okay. So you can't sit there and say, well, it's because all the properties. And no, no. Eight, not that many properties are going to raise the median value of, of your houses to $800,000 in such a gigantic state. I believe one of, the, one of the top 10 economies in the world, just the state of California. Well, <clears throat> so now here comes a guy who's a black libertarian who looks like from a polling perspective, if there is a recall, Sounds like he has a shot. Now I don't think he's going to win. Like I said, the, there's the the the, the machine, the, the the progressive machine and the left machine uh, is just it's so powerful in that state. He's being outraised ten to one. Guys like Soros are throwing money into it. And no, I'm not getting into anything else about Soros. But he, I mean, literally, he donated another half million dollars to uh, Newsom's campaign. Hollywood is going crazy. Hollywood is going absolutely crazy about this. Because a very obvious reason, what happens if he wins? What happens if Larry Elder, by some miracle, wins this election? It takes the whole narrative, the whole progressive narrative, and turns it on its head. All those white racists and all the racists, everybody's a racist, you're a racist, if you don't agree with me, racist, 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 shut up with all that bullshit. Oh my gosh, everybody knows it's a lie. So, you know, whatever. It's just the, the for some reason, people have lost their spines. They won't stand up for themselves. When somebody calls them a name, they, they, they allow themselves to be shamed, and they, they stick their heads down. I guess maybe, no, no. No, if you lead a decent life and you treat everybody responsibly and, 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 and with dignity, you're not a racist. And we talked about this. Stuff. There's a, racism has a definition. There's a word uh, or definition for that word. If you don't believe that a race is a determinant, for how far a person can go through, go get in life intellectually and um, and make it and, and all that. If you don't think that one race is superior to another based on intellect and, and all of this, then you're not a racist. I'm not. I don't believe any of that crap. It's nonsense. But we allow ourselves to be shamed. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. But man, can you imagine? Can you imagine if this guy at least makes a real good run at it? It takes the whole narrative, turns it right on its head. And as we know, um, the Democrats, the, the largest block apparently that they have um, amongst uh, minority groups, <clears throat> obviously are people that are black. And when I said this, and we'll move on with it, the Latino thing is not going well for them. You know, and uh, we'll see how this works out. But also in Georgia, you have Herschel Walker, the former running back, um, who, who graduated from the University of Georgia, from Georgia, played for the New Jersey Generals, if you remember him, them, um, and, and the Cowboys and such. He, he is now running for senator in Georgia. Uh, I found the gremlin. I know what it is. <laughs> screensaver popped up. And when the screensaver pops up, it, it, it stops the recording, so I have to go back and fix it. I had an update on my machine. Anyway, uh, Herschel Walker. And um, what I'm concerned about in identity politics, I'm not a big fan of it, um, mainly because it takes into account the exterior more than the interior. And that's, to me, who we are is, is our character, not our race. Our race doesn't define who we are. Our race defines what race we're of. That's it. <laughs> that's literally all it does. Um, and... 
But it's an interesting watch because if Herschel Walker does win and if um, Larry Elder wins in California, which I said, I don't know if that, I doubt that's going to happen. But it takes the narrative and completely turns it on their head. White, re I'm sorry, black Republicans winning elections. And it's, now you got Tim Scott also in South Carolina, who I'm, be, I'm a big fan of his. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Tim Scott. Great guy, amazing story, um, just a, a great person. Imagine if he runs for president, which everybody's saying he is. Everybody's talking about DeSantis, DeSantis. I don't think he's going to run. I don't think DeSantis is going to run at all. Um, but Tim Scott has been talking the way people who are considering running for president are talk before they do their senatorial elections. And I know he's up in South Carolina. Suppose he runs for president and wins. It's over. The, the, the narrative is dead. And the people that run the DNC right now, and I'm going to leave it with this, are panicking. They are literally panicking. And that's why I believe the message that they continually throw out there, this toxic message of um, if you are this, you're this. If you're if you're X, this is your racial component. And, and if you're Y, the, your race, this race, you have to be this and that. Just the underpinnings of Marxism. And I. this is why I abhor, abhor identity politics. Who you are is not... You're, you know, the exterior. Who you are is who you are on the inside. That's how I look at it. It would be really nice someday to move on and leave it with this. Where we started voting based on issues and not drummed up issues. I'm sorry. Okay? these This thing where America is a racist nation and everybody that's white that doesn't agree with me is a racist is absolute bullshit. It's bullshit. It's a lie from hell. Okay, don't fall into this. Don't believe it. Just live your life the way you need to live it. And don't let these people drag you around and, and, and make you think that this is actually a thing. It, it's so horrible to do. And, and then you have to ask yourself, who are the people that are pushing this message and why? We know why, because heaven forbid, if the African-American vote goes from, say, what it is around now, nationally, about 88 percent Democrat. If it goes down to 70, the, the party implodes. They can't afford um, they can't afford losing a million votes in a national election. They can't afford it. Certainly, and, and certainly in key areas, they can't afford losing a million, a million and a half votes. So what do they do? Terrify the shit out of you, as opposed to applauding people like Larry Elder, and not just him and, and other, but other prominent black individuals who have achieved some really wonderful things. You know, Ben Carson, I'm not a brain surgeon. You a brain surgeon? <laughs> you have to be an extraordinary individual to be able to pull something like that off. Anyway, so there you go. Something to keep an eye on. I'm going to get on with my day. You should get on with your day too. I love you. I want you to have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Um, and that's about it. Who you are is inside. Don't let anyone tell you any different. I love you. You have a good day.